from Connecticut's news leader. This is NBC 30 News today at 10 a.m. Well, as you and your family gear up to head back to school, if you're the parent of a child with disabilities, there are some things you should know to help your child make a smooth transition into the school year. Joining us this morning to talk about the issue is Julie Swanson, special education advocate and disability specialist here for our great state of Connecticut. Good morning to you, Julie. Good morning. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Hey, we should also mention you're also the mother of a child with autism. You know what it means to, to have a child and have that child experience different things due to their disability in school it can be tough absolutely and also in my practice as a um, private special education advocate the majority of my clients seek to resolve bullying issues of their kids with disabilities and I primarily work um, on behalf of kids who have autism spectrum disorders gotcha. and it's um, more prevalent than I'd like it to be now children with disorders Julie how are they affected when it comes to school time they're treated a little differently oftentimes well here's what we know here's what research does tell us that we as humans are less tolerant of people who think and act differently. Mm. In fact, they are people who think and act differently are seven times more likely to be abused by adults. Mm. So if you take that adult research and put it over to the idea that perhaps children are have the same intolerance, um, these kids who are less able to navigate their social skills, um, are more likely to be bullied by their peers. Which is frightening, a frightening thought. I see it all the time and, it, and it's, it's pretty pervasive. So, are we talking only about uh, autism, or are we talking about a wide range of, of disabilities? We're talking about a right, wide range: um, autism spectrum disorders, yes. um, ADD, ADHD, and some other learning disabilities. Any kind of invisible disability mm. that compromises a child's social skills. Yes. I see. Let's talk about parents and, and what they can do. I think before parents can, can start to help their child, they first right. need to recognize that their child may be having right. some problems at school. I'm a big believer as a child of a parent, um, uh, uh, if you're a parent of a child with a disability, you need to know that your child is at greater risk. Hmm. And therefore, look out for some of the signs. Um, if all of a sudden your, your child is avoiding school or perhaps flat out refusing to go, perhaps their mood is changing, hmm. you should be aware that perhaps they should be screened for bullying and wow. what you can do is get your school involved get the special education team involved whether it's the school psychologist the social worker the the, um, the special education case manager and monitor that child in unstructured settings in the school hmm. the hallways the lunchroom the cafe um, the cafeteria the um, the school buses these are the places where bullying happens because it typically doesn't happen while adult eyes are watching Julie, what about parents who don't quite realize yet that their child may have a disability and on the flip side of that, parents who perhaps may suspect but don't want to face up to it, don't want to, to you know, recognize that there may be a little issue there? Well, that's altogether another, an, another issue. Another topic. Uh, we uh, could uh, talk uh, about that for it, an hour. It, it, it <laughs> certainly is. That's, that's an issue unto itself and um, I think that you just have to be aware of what is typical behavior and if something is left of center, you, you need to follow follow up and get evaluated um, and certainly are there are all sorts of resources here in Connecticut um, to look into w w if you suspect your child has a disability. If you do have a child with a disability and you perhaps suspect that there is some bullying happening, say your child is coming home and, and not yeah. wanting to return right. to school the next day, what right. can parents do? Well, I think first and foremost you need to get the school involved okay. and do the monitoring, um, as I said. And then each child is different. So let's say the plan, first of all, I'm a big believer, you can't fix a problem until you know it, what, it, what it is. Right. So you have to understand what is that specific child's vulnerability? Where is that that child getting into trouble at school mm. and identify that then put a plan together and that's going to be different uh, for the child who perhaps may be nonverbal and who has autism wow. or the child who has high functioning autism and is very verbal uh, th those are different types of plans that you could put together interesting topic and, and Julie we are speaking on an issue that's affecting so many families yes, not is. only here in Connecticut but across the country Absolutely. Um, autism now being called an epidemic amongst our children so Absolutely. I thank you so much for your time You're we quite have welcome we've linked your website to our website so if you'd like much more information on this issue and, and navigating the world of special education go to our website nbc30.com look under the news at tin tab to the left of your screen there you will find a link to Julie's website thank you Julie thank you well all next week NBC 30 is helping 
helping to get your kids ready to go back to school. Tune in at 10 o'clock every day. We'll have expert advice to get your family off their summer schedule, some healthy lunchbox ideas, and what to do if food allergies are a big concern in your home. We'll also give you an inside look at some of the hottest back-to-school fashions. You don't want to miss that. Find out what will be in style all year.